Hello everyone and welcome back to Hope and Anchor Community Church. We believe that God has so much store for us today during today's service and we hope that you are expecting as well. So why don't we hand things off to our worship team. Thank you guys so much. That was an amazing time of worship. And Jesus is our molder and our maker, so we're going to continue to sing worship later on. But for now, we're going to be going over to our testimonies with Shani and Faith. Hi, I'm Shani. I'm part of Opening Community Church. Um, I recently moved, and a few weeks ago, I was going out with some friends. Um, a thing I really love to do is just to take out my headphones and just read a book on the train. And as I was going to the train, I realized that I'm only going to stop, so it's kind of silly to bring a book with me that day. Um, 
But on the platform, this woman approaches me and she's like, is that any good? And we start talking about books and offers and stuff like that. Um, she asked me why I'm in London. I explained to her that I'm a Christian, um, I work for a charity, and we do a lot of outreaches and stuff like that in Kenton. And she was so encouraged because she, that very weekend, uh, had been pioneering a food program in my neighborhood. Um, and she ends our conversation with, I just love how God interrupts. And that really confronted me as well because Chris that morning had been talking about, are we connected to our community? Do we know what's going on in our neighborhoods? Um, so for me, that's just like a challenge. Like, do we allow God to interrupt us? Um, so yeah, let God interrupt your day and, and hopefully amazing things, will happen, amazing things will happen. Hi church, I'm Faith and I wanted to share how last Thursday during worship, God showed me how to surrender to Him. So that morning, as I was walking in to worship, my head was really distracted. I was consumed with feelings of rejection, hurt, and pride. And because of that, I kind of paused and closed my eyes and prayed. And I said to God, um, God, please take away this pride, this hurt, and this feeling of rejection and any roots that I built in my, that I've grown in my heart that doesn't belong or come from you. And please replace it with your joy, your love, and your identity. And in that moment, as I was repeating that under my breath, um, the worship leader said, like, change the song, and he started singing, Oh, Come to the Altar. And he was explaining before that he felt like God was telling him to sing that that day. And as the voices filled the room and the lyrics, oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Those lyrics hit me and I started tearing up and like shaking, which like sometimes is normal. But like what, what was different about that time was there was this uncontainable smile that kind of forced its way onto my face. And I felt like freedom in my heart. And after that day, I still struggled with like negative thoughts and like things consuming me. But instead of dwelling on that inner turmoil, I remember I was reminded of that moment. And instead of yeah dwelling in hurt, I turned to God and who He says I am. And that was really encouraging and a game changer for me. So I hope God shows you what your game game changer is in this season too. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us. It's always so good to hear just the different ways that God's been moving and speaking throughout our church family. Now, as we come to the time where we're gonna collect the tithes and the offerings, I just wanted to share a verse with you guys. And the verse comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 15. And it says, Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And something that really stuck out to me about this is how it was saying to watch out and be really on your guard against greed because uh, it's so easy for us to think like, oh, but I need this or I'm lacking in this rather than to actually look at the perspective of what we do have and what we've already been given, what we've already been blessed with. Uh, and it's such a sneaky thing, you know? Greed is something that's so sneaky and it's so small uh, and it just works its way in in, in such a, a sneaky way, you know? Um, and we want to be people who are generous, you know, we don't want to get stuck in just thinking, okay, but I need this, but I need to take care of myself. But we want to be people who are trusting God uh, to meet all of our needs. And so one way to do that is through giving our tithes and our offerings. It's a way of being generous and saying, you know what, God, maybe there is a lack, but I trust that you're going to meet that need. Uh, and that's something that actively goes against the greed that this verse is talking about. Uh, it takes us out of the center of things and it puts God back into the center. So yeah, as we give our tithes and our offerings, let's, let's give with that heart and with that spirit, that spirit of generosity, that spirit that is trusting in God to meet all of our needs. So God, we just wanna come before you this morning, God, and first of all, we just wanna thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for the way that you're so generous with us. We thank you for the way that you're constantly providing and that you're meeting every single need that we have, Father. Uh, we just wanna ask that you would really show us how to live like that as well, God that we would live out of the abundance of what you've already given, Father, that we would be a people who are generous, who look like you as we give, God. Uh, we don't wanna give because it's just a good Christian thing to do, God. We wanna give uh, because we wanna be able to bless others as well. We wanna trust in you, God. We wanna continue to believe that you're gonna be the one to meet every single need that we have, Father. Um, so yeah, we just ask that you would multiply the offerings and the tithes that are given today, God, and that you would use them to be a blessing for many. In your name we pray, amen. 
There are several ways you can give your tithes and offerings. One of those is through an app that's called Tithely, which I really love. It's a super easy way to give. And then we also receive tithes and offerings through PayPal or through a bank transfer as well.
thank you, Father, for your amazing presence, Lord. It is so good. It is so good to be in your presence, to be able to rely that you are the constant factor, Father. Everything else will change, and we know, but you will never change, Lord. And it's such a place of rest. And Father, today, we not only want to thank you for your rest, we want to really involve our hearts, our emotions, our spirit, Lord, our knowledge, Father, our understanding, our worldview, Father, the way that we perceive life, our emotions, Father, our criteria, Father, our arguments, everything in us has to worship you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, as a church. Father, we pray for everything that has been going during the week in our nation here in the UK, Father. Father, we pray for every family, every member of like a household like that has felt alone, Father, but has felt that you have been there with them. Father, we pray. Father, that this word will reach them, Father. We pray for every prisoner, Father, everyone that is watching this from their cell, Father, from their, from their space of living in a prison. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that, Father, your, your power is not submitted to a geographical situation, Lord, because you are God, Lord. And we trust you like that, Father. And as we, as we keep on worshiping you through the word, Lord, Father, we ask that you would reveal your heart in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. And everyone say amen, 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 amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much for that amazing, amazing job. And as we go into the word of God today, we're going to come out of the subject. And I know it's a bit quirky, it's a bit weird, but it's, it's actually what I feel the Lord is wanting for us. It's called shake well. And if we go into the word of God, we're going to come out of the King James Version Old school, we're going old school today, and we're going to come out of the chapter 4, and we're going to read only verse 1 and 2. I think that's the portion that God has, that the Holy Spirit really wants to underline, that really wants to nourish us through, and I believe we're going to be really blessed. I think we're going to be encouraged and nourished by God today. Are you with me? Yeah? So Hebrews 4, King James Version, verse 1 and 2 says, Let us therefore fear. Least a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. I will come again into it. Let us therefore fear, at least a promise being left us of entering into his rest. There's a promise that has been left for us to enter into his rest. But don't take it so quick. This is not heaven. We're talking about the promise of what God is wanting for us. Let us fear that we will not come into the promise because we will come short of it. Father, thank you for your word. And Father, as we keep on understanding this portion and, and really kind of seeing how you can catapult us into other moments in the Bible, Father, we ask that you would just really open our minds, our hearts, Lord. Father, that you would lead us, even our feelings, Lord. We are a generation that needs your, your guidance in our feelings, Lord. Father, many other generations might have not prayed for that, but we do pray that you you carry us even in the weakness of our feelings and our understanding, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We rely on you. Amen. Amen. I want to highlight, first of all, that says fear right there. And that's not my favorite word in the universe. Whoever knows me, I know that you know. You know that fear is definitely not my word. Fear is definitely that thing that drives me out of bed in the morning. And actually, until I have none of them left... To kill, to stone away, I'm using kind of an analogy of David, um, I would not go back to bed. Because I, can, I cannot go back to bed if I had not taken at least one giant down. But that word fear is very lineal into everything that God wants to speak to us today. But I thought, and if we talk that word fear straight up, what kind of fear we should be having? Or should we have one? We have been taught that if I thought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears, I should not have any. That was David in Psalm 34. Those who seek him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. I mean, that's our portion. But this other verse in Hebrews says, Hebrews 4 says we should 
have fear. And sometimes I just want to marry what God is saying. If we go to Psalms 23, and that's the most epic psalm ever in history. Can I have an amen in the feedback? It says, even though, even though, Hebrew said, therefore. But Psalm 23 starts with, even though. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So now we are, we're seeing evil is cornered out into the evil. We're cornered into, I will fear no evil. But Hebrews is still saying fear. Therefore, fear. Although Psalm 23 is saying, even though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. But if God is with us, and He's still today, His rod and His staff, they come for me. If we can keep on with this, what is it that God wants to say today? Shake well. Shake it off, shake it in, shake it all the way. If we go to Psalms, and this is the last exposition I want to probably bring into that. Maybe I'll bring another one. I'll bring another one. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The fear of God comes to lead us into a position. It comes to lead us into a reality. It comes to let us know that if we are with God, there's a position that has been ordered for us. That same psalm says in 27.1, we keep on reading, it says, The Lord is the stronghold, the one that has a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I fear? If God has a hold of my life, if I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. But still Hebrews still directs us to fear. And when the Lord took me to this portion in the Bible and, and all these verses and all these moments in the Bible, in the life of men that have lived real fear, that had lived situations that were stressful and they were put all to the corner. They were between a hard place and the wall. They had fear. But God was saying, although they all said, I shall not fear, whom shall I fear? I'm still wondering why God wants us today to have some kind of fear. Some kind of fear. All of us would say that Jesus didn't give us, if we go actually into the Bible in Timothy, 2 Timothy, it says in, verse, in, in chapter 1, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. And did he say that? He said it. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. So no fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In an era like today, in a day like today, in a season like we're all living around the world, not only here in the UK, but in your life, in your office, in your family, in your relationships, in your finances, in anything that you're doing, you actually need a sound mind. But still the Bible today has something for us. Fear. Fear. Fear, therefore, fear. Therefore, fear. What should I fear? So I, I am not left out of the promise. So I mean with this, and I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to say that there's a, a good complementary fear that we can have. Although He directs us not to be afraid and that He has not given us a spirit of fear, he give, He's giving us a portion that actually is complementing that over outstanding truth of God. Yes, of course, we cannot have a spirit of fear, but we can be afraid. We can have fear. And that doesn't neglect the fact that God is for us, that we can go through the valley of shadow of death and have no fear of evil. But fear is a factor that is healthy. As a generation, we want to kick all our fears away. We want to think about life like there's nothing that will make me afraid. When we are juvenile and we're immature in our faith, we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Although that didn't mean that, that you're saying. And that's out of context. But if we really go into the purpose, what you were saying is true. But it's incomplete. There's a kind of fear that works for us, that works for our salvation, that is working on our favor. That is actually reverence. Therefore, have reverence. The original of this Hebrew 
says, have reverence. Therefore us, let us have, essentially, let us have reverence. The context is, he's referring to the, to the Gentiles and the Israelites. He's referring to them back in the day, and he's referring forward in time to you and me. And God is saying, hey, my word is sufficient. Although I can talk to them in the past, I'm still talking my word doesn't come out void. Therefore, fear less. A promise being left to us of entering into his rest. And the rest of God comes to those that didn't come short. I don't want to come short. My prayer for you and for me and I believe this is the, one of the burdens of the Holy Spirit for this moment, this day, this special moment that we're able to spend together. I don't know if this is catching you on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday or on a Sunday or a Monday. If you are in the shower here in the podcast, if you are actually in your office making sure you're working, I don't know. But the Lord says, I have rest. I want you to be able to enter into the rest that I promised to you. I don't want you to come short. The Word of God comes today to make sure that the fear of God is upon us, that the, the reverence of God, and that's what He wants us to actually revere and to be afraid of. That word fear has bad rep, but fear, every time something bad was going to happen in my life, I had fear. And many times I was able to take the right decision because there was a sense of fear. So fear in itself inherently is not a wrong thing. What do I do with my fear? Or why am I afraid of? If my fear provokes me to revere God, that's a positive. That's a positive fear. That's the direction of the Lord. God is allowing me to feel in the senses what is actually a good thing to have, to be able to fulfill, to be able to enter into His promises. Are you with me? For us, for unto us, there was a gospel preached, verse 2. It says it was preached. And when I talk about preach, I'm talking about ruach, breath. And I'm talking about sound. I'm talking about breath and sound. The breath of God came unto us. The breath of the gospel. The one that spoke the gospel, Jesus Christ. The sound of the gospel. What it brings when it happens. The rhythm of the gospel came as well unto them. But the word preached, the sound and the rhythm and the breath of God did not profit them. This is so deep and so important. Some people say that Paul wrote this. Some people say Apollos wrote this. And for you and me, it's inconsequential. Because as for you and me, we have been challenged by this word today to not let our lack of fear of God, our lack of reverence to keep us from entering the rest, the promise, the breath, the movement, the sound of God has to permeate into every area of our life, into everything that we do because He wants us to profit from them. It says as well unto them, it was preached unto them, but they didn't profit. They didn't profit from the word that they were preached at. The sounds of God are banging at our door. The breath of God, the spirit of God, the stillness of God is banging at our days. But are we profiting from them? And I know profit is like a mundane word and we don't talk about it. I know, I know. It might sound like really wrong theology, but the Bible says they didn't profit of them. So for those, fear God. But it says... It didn't profit them for a reason. It didn't profit them because not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Profit in the dictionary actually is a financial term. It's a financial gain. Especially it's what we have, the amount earned in between what we had spent when we're buying or consuming something, operating over something or producing something and what is left. So when we, we make the, the balance in between what we spent and what we got and we deduct from them, that's our profit. 
So the word, the breath, and the movement, and the sound of God has to profit in our life. It's a financial term, but the Bible doesn't talk about finances. You're wrong. For God so loved the word that he gave financial transaction. For God so loved the word that he gave. And what is the profit that God gets from what he gave? That's you and that's me. That's your movement. That's your actions. That's your behavior. That's what you do with what the word has caused into you. That is the truth of the gospel. God is looking for a profit. God wants you to profit from the sun coming into your life because the word of God, the preaching of the word comes to deliver Jesus into your heart. The word in the beginning was the word. Jesus is the word. So when you preach and I'm preaching and I'm using words, what I'm actually translating is that Jesus, his life comes into you to bring a profit, not only to your life, but I know you were not thinking only of yourself. I'm thinking about God having a prophet out of our lives. Another word that is used actually is the word benefit. And when I'm thinking of that, I think of David. David actually in the Bible was actually kind of like asking himself and asking his soul, his own soul to not forget. But we're going we're gonna to go into that. I don't want to get ahead of me. I got to mix this. When I get the word, when now we receive this word, I want this to be profitable for heaven. I don't want to stand. I don't want to sit in my couch. I don't want to sit in my office. I don't want to sit in the bus. I don't want to sit in the toilet. I don't want to be someone that listens to the word of God and brings no profit to the table. I don't want to be a person that therefore, because I was not paying attention, I didn't enter into the promise of rest. And through me, no one could rest because I was not paying attention to the promise. I was not paying attention and I was cut short because I was not looking. I was not revering. I was not paying attention to what is actually worth something. Because when we do that, fear has to tremble. The fear of the flesh loses the, the tangles that, and the entanglement that it has. Hell itself gets nervous. The enemy of your life gets nervous. Everything that you are afraid of, everything that you are intimidated by, loses power, loses grip, loses territory. The word comes today to say, get mixed. Shake it well. And why shake it well? A while ago, um, I had two situations, right? Um, I had some builders in my house and they were fixing some, some areas in my house. And um, we had some paint left from the last time something had gone wrong and in the house it had that same color. So we left the leftovers of that paint in the cupboard. And when we were, when we were like looking for the paint, we looked for the kind of paint that we needed for that type of wall and the color that it had. But the problem is that, that that paint had been sitting there for a while. So paints are actually developed and they have addendums. They have things that, that have been added into the pigment to be able to add on and to, to be able to create in, in the actual wall a surface that, that adheres, that actually survives time and stains and so on and for. But we got to mix it well. When it has been sitting there without being used... It would not profit us that in that same can, there's pigment, but there's the addendums, there's the additives that we need for make that last long. Not only to have the color of the gospel, God has not colored us only with color, but he wants us to have the strength and the durability in our worth with all, in our stamina, in our emotions, in the way that we take offense that profits him. If you don't shake that paint, it would have the color, but it would not stay. It would not have the durability. And the Lord is wanting us to be mixed, to be shaken well. In this Sunday, in this day that we're hearing this, in this moment, God is wanting us and he's asking us, are you mixing it with faith? Are you mixing it with the word? Are you mixing your life and your belief, your belief system with the word of God? 
Is there anything in your belief system that doesn't want to adhere to the word of God because there's a feeling, there's a sensation, there's a longing, there's a craving in your flesh that doesn't adhere to that? Is there anything in the paint that we had to scoop up? There's nothing worse than when you're painting a wall and you have not really shaken that can, that one of those kind of old peelings or maybe the hairs of the roller that stay on the wall. For the ones that have actually done something like this in life, it's very annoying because you gotta, you got to put your fingers into it. God has to put his fingers into our life. What looks smooth and perfect but still has a hair. It has something. It has, it has something that is, is not supposed to be there. Something that is stiff. Something that is not malleable. That is not producing the effect that it should be bringing. Are we mixing the word? Let us fear. Let us have so much reverence that we are not losing the promise or come short because we are not able to mix, that we're not able to mix in faith with God and what He's bringing through His Word to us. If we go to Romans, we go to Romans 10, 17, the New King James Version says, So then faith comes by hearing. And it also says, and hearing by the Word of God. But I'm saying, okay, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. When we're looking into, into Hebrew, it says that, you know what, they didn't mix it with fear. So it means that, that fear itself is not an ingredient. If we stay only with the example that I gave you, you might think that faith is just the additive of the pigment. But God is saying through His Word, it therefore, therefore fear, and you might just end up short because you're not mixing your, your word, the word that has been preached unto you, my sound, my rhythm. You're not missing, mixing my, my personality with your belief. So faith is actually an ingredient, but it's not what we do with it. It says that we didn't mix it with faith. We didn't mix it with what we walk with. It, does, it doesn't mean that it actually is it's an action that you have to do only. It means that it's the substance. Faith is the substance of God is the substance that what we're waiting, that what we're hoping for. It says your Bible. There it says that faith comes by hearing. Some of them heard it and it were not profitable to them because they didn't put it into action. They didn't mix it with action. James 1.22 says, do not merely listen to the word. Don't be listeners only. I believe there's so many people that listen even to messages like this and they will listen and that uh, you will take the word with all in your heart to actually kind of think, you know, but sometimes we got to step back with a little bit of humility and say, do I know, Lord? James 1.22 asked us, do not merely be listeners to the word. Are you a listener of the word only? Because if you do, it says it very clear. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. How much of the word that you receive are you living? Because James is saying, do what it says. Mix your faith. Shake it well. So you have all the addendums. Faith is in there. The word is in there. But are you mixing it with action? Another part in the Bible actually would tell us in the same way, James 2.17 in the same way, faith by itself, faith as an ingredient, faith as an ingredient, safe, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. I love how the Berean Study Bible puts it. He said, if one of you tells him, go in peace and stay warm and well fed, but does not provide, he's talking about when you are talking about the gospel or looking after your neighbor. It says, if you go and tell him, go in peace, but you gave him your peace. Stay warm, but you gave him his, your coat. Stay fed, but you, you fed them like Jesus has fed us. But, don't not, but not just provide the physical needs. What good is it? What good is it? And he says, because so, faith itself by itself results in death. If you don't act on your faith, it will not be profitable. Are we mixing it? Are we mixing the word that we receive? Are we mixing the faith? Are we mixing it with action? Are we actually allowing God to put us in the process 
that leads us into action. There's some benefits. There's some profits that we get from actually allowing God to walk God with God, to, to revere God in such a way that we don't lose the promise. And actually we're walking in the word, mixing it with faith and acting on it. And first of all, it makes us people that remember are thankful. If you're taking notes, this is maybe something that will help you during the week. And I'll start closing in a minute. It says that when you take reverence from the Lord, when you take a hold of the word and you don't forget it when you are, you are respectful of the Lord of the presence of God and what he spoke unto you and the rhythm of God, you remember what he has done. You become a person that remembers. Forgetful people are ungrateful people. Forgetful people become ungrateful people. Father, deliver us from forgetting, from forgetting what you have done. When we talk about Psalm 116 verse 12 says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits? This is David. What shall I render? What should I give? What, how, what, what would I say to the Lord for all his benefits? And he finishes with this, towards me. For the ones that are scared of being people that are blessed by God. I don't know if it happens to you, but at some point in my life, I was scared to be blessed by God because I was actually from the bad knowledge coming from that place of religiosity thinking if he gave it, he's going to demand something even bigger from me. But God is a good father. God is a good father. You don't have to be scared of his blessings. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? The benefits of God, the prophet of God, shaking it up, shaking that word with the faith that we have believed in and having actions will render us to be benefit, to have benefit and have profit. But what can we give to God? The second thing that it gives us, that was in the New King James Version, because of that, what can we give to God who will make us humble? To be able to mix that word, to be able to shake the word of God with our faith in what we have believed and accompany with actions, to do that actually keeps us humble. It keeps us actually not focused on the benefits and actually it makes us understand that the benefits, what we have profited from, from revering to God, from getting that word, it was not about us. One of the best examples that we have is when Jesus talked to Pilate and he was actually saying in John 19, he was saying actually, you know what you have, you have no power. You could have no power at all against me unless it was being given from above unto you. Everything that we can do, if we go and we, you don't believe me, we can go into David. David was actually seen by the people like a man that had won a lot of wars. Because, you, you know, we have that sense of like Jesus, well, Jesus is Jesus, you know what I mean? But I'm not Jesus. But I'll tell you someone that actually loved Jesus, like you can love Jesus. It was David. And it was a man that actually looked like he was successful. Everyone regards him as a very successful king. But even David, he would not be proud of his, the way that we, he won, the, the victories that he had, his military achievements. Although the Bible itself says in the New Living Translation, in 2 Samuel 23, 1, it says that David was a man to whom God gave such wonderful success. Humility, when we mix the word with faith and action, we create humility. David was sure that it was not because of what he knew or what he did. It was because of the God that was with him. That was from the first day in the field when he was praising God by himself and God found him as a man after his own heart all the way to where he was baptized or anointed. It depends on the version. By the prophet saying, this is the king, this is the man after my own heart. Also, it will go all the way to when he faced Goliath the problem in life, I'm going to translate it for you. That problem in life that makes you surrender what you think you know. That makes you stop in the middle of life because you were doing something different. And allows you to understand that your God is with you to revere him. It says, 2 Samuel 23, 1, that David was a man that God gave such a wonderful success. People saw that it was more than David. David understood. David always pointed back at God. He always, in other versions, in other moments in the Bible, he said, I'm just by a dog. Why would you pay attention to me? 
He was not described as a man accomplished. He was not described as a man that was great in, in military efforts. He was a man that was described as a, a man that God helped, that the Lord helped, and that the Lord fought his battles. He fought, but the Lord fought for him. Third thing that the Lord does is that he helps us. He helps us to stay focused. He helps us to stay focused beyond the man efforts, our efforts, the people that we know, and the situations that are around us. When we have that faith that actually is able to be shaken and shaken well, we're able to see that the word profits and we are focused on the Lord beyond what we can do or the situations or the help that we can get. Psalm 20, 34, 5 says, They looked at him and they were radiant. At their faces were not ashamed because they were looking at the Lord. Those that look at the Lord and shake their faith, looking at God, looking at what he can do, are always radiant. Point four, it doesn't allow us to be intimidated or harassed. It doesn't allow us to fall under the intimidation of the things, present conditions of life, the things that we see, the videos that we see, the bad news all around us. When we are shaking the word, mixing it with faith, when we are allowing our spirit to be drenched and be active by that, that God is investing in us, we are not intimidated, but we can walk the situations in life that might have destabilized us or depressed us or oppressed us, we're able to look at them from a different perspective. We're able to look at them and not have to compare ourselves to others or to the past or even compare ourselves to the idea of what it should be in our minds. God delivers us from that when we're mixing it, when we're shaking it well. When we're shaking that word, we're coming back to the Lord. It also Point five, enables us. When he enables us, we can put our trust in him, not in methods, not in others, not in strategies, no tricks, no tactics, no nothing. We're able to stay put. He enables us to stay in the mix, to stay in the process. There, right there in the feed, you can put, I want to stay in the mix. I want to shake this well. I want to be in the process. A good example of this Actually, it's when David was told by Saul that he wanted to give him his armor. We talk about Samuel 17 right there, and you can look and find it. I think it's verse 38. But you can see that he was actually looking to give David his shield and his sword and other things, you know. But David didn't have that from God. It was from others. So sometimes... There's things that you will get in the presence of God and in the intimacy of God, in the word of God said to you in the private that you will not get from this, this recording, this video, this service. I don't know in what sense or what, in, in what aspect you're seeing it, but you don't get either from other people's commentaries over your life and your feed, other ones' encouragement. You got to get it straight from God. It's not what others give you. That brings life. It's what God gives to you and you have believed and you are shaking it well and you have accompanied with actions. It makes no difference who God is supporting if you are not believing in God. It helps us when we mix the voice of God, the word of God, the breath, the movement, the rhythm of God with our faith, with what we believed and actions, we will be blessed. And bless actually explained there in Matthew in the Amplified Version as not only happy. Happy is a great song and we like it. But also it talks about spiritually prosperous. It talks about we will be profitable. We will be prosperous in our spirit. We'll, we'll see the benefits in our spirit. Also it says that with joy and satisfaction we will observe the favor of God and His salvation over our life, even though, regardless of the outward conditions in our life. Are you with me? Point nine, it says that it confuses the enemy. When we're mixing it, the enemy cannot believe that even though he has tried to steal, he has tried to take from you that joy, because that's what he came to do, to destroy, to steal, and to rob. He has come to do all those things, but it confuses him completely. He cannot destroy. He cannot steal. He cannot deceive you. 
And that makes him weaker. It makes him weaker in front of you. It makes him weaker in the opposition of the truth and the promises of God. It makes him weaker in the life of others that are seeing you, that are looking at your testimony, the way that you deal with what is served day in and day out in your life. We know that life happens to us all. But if they would see, they see that you are not weakened by this. The enemy has become weaker when you are mixing it, when you are shaking it well. Shake it well. Remember, last point, it positions us. It positions us to harvest not only testimonies, but his faithfulness. And as we close, we want to say that Psalm 03 describes it in the most awesome way possible. Psalm 103 Verse 2 says, it says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. As we come into this, the word of God is inclusive in us. It's not exclusive. And as we mix our faith, as we're able to shake it well, shake what he has invested into us, shake that word, that movement, that rhythm of God, Shake it, shake it inside of our souls, inside of what we have believed. Let that shake everything that we believe. When we allow that to come in and be accompanied with our actions, that mix, that mix and shake actually comes in. We shake it and we become fruitful. We shake it and we become mindful. We become humble. We shake it and we become successful, focused. We become radiant, as the Bible says. We became brave and hopeful, hope that actually can be transferred onto others. As we start closing and we see this and the, and, the, and the worship team come in, we actually have to say that faith allows us to speak and speak loud. The church, the people, the communities, the cities, everything that we are touching today needs a church, needs a you and needs a me that is speaking loud. We are allowing this to be shaken well. The, all the addendums, everything that is in that pot, it's mixed up properly. It would actually allow us to be filled, not feel empty like the world, not be able to just go around and just try to be filled with whatever. We will feel filled. We won't have the need to crave for things that are less than what we have been called for. What everyone is running towards, we will be joyful as well, or filled and joyful, and we'll be positioned. Positioned to see the goodness. Positioned to be a testimony. To position to see how our enemies, the things that we're fighting, are confused. We are positioned. We'll see our enemy weak. If you are making a decision for Jesus, you are today a breeding place. If you have made a decision already for God and you have not walked with Him in the way that you think that God is wanting from you, if you hear this message and in your heart, in your, in your mind, you're thinking, okay, you know, I can do better. God, I need your help. Today, this message comes for you to be included and not excluded from that grace, from that power, from that mix, from that promise that we talked at the beginning. Remember who you are and remember that you are a breeding place. You're a place where God brings the goodness. You're the place where God brings the blessings. You're the place that testimonies are built and born. And you were born for this. So if you have not made a decision for Jesus and you're listening to this, I want to make it clear. This is for you as well. If you have made a decision and you are not walking with God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that His help, that His Spirit will come and give you strength to shake it well, to shake the investment of God inside of you to shake it well, to allow the circumstances to be those, those moments, those pivotal moments that shake it and that your faith is stirred. What you believe is stirred to believe Him and He will produce in you actions in the name of Jesus. If you're listening to this and you have not made a decision, you can pray with me like this. It's simple. Jesus, I come into your presence. Forgive the things that I have done wrong. I ask you to forgive me Father, and I decide, I give my life, I give my mind to you as my only Lord, my only Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you did that prayer, God is for you, and this is in for you. Everything in your life is going to be starting to be moved and shaken 
but don't worry God is gonna surround you if you don't know any Christians just keep on tuning in because the Lord will keep on comforting you and leading you and challenging you to you for you to actually walk forward we believe in you we believe in what God is sowing into your life investing and we know that if you allow him to shake it and you allow your faith and your belief system to be shaken by him it will be mixed and you will be able to be one of those, those that reaches the lands in the promise what God has promised only to you in Jesus name guys thank you so much for joining us today as always it's been amazing but before you run out before you go off and start figuring out what you're doing with your week we want to remind you what's going on this week uh, first and foremost there's hope kids uh, which happens this afternoon which you should definitely check out there's songs there's fun games and stuff for the kids you should definitely check that out uh, not only that but there is the podcast 
which is the anchor of the week, which is on all podcast platforms, which features Court, which features Zach, and they've been doing amazing jobs. You should definitely give that a listen to talk about amazing topics. It's really, really, really good. Uh, there's also connect groups. So if you'd like to get plugged in, reach out, continue growing family, friendships, please like reach out to us and we'll plug you in and we can meet up in the week. We can talk, see what God's been doing. Uh, and lastly, most importantly, if you have a testimony that you would like to share with us about what God has been doing, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear it. We love hearing how God is moving, how he's been preparing the ground. Uh, and before you guys go today, uh, we just want you to remember that uh, put this word into action this week. Uh, we love you guys. As always, it's good to see you and we'll see you next week. See you guys.